we're here at Cincy AI Week, and Patrick, thank you for joining us. Uh, just tell us a little bit about you and your company, what you do in the world of AI. Certainly. Um, I've been with Claro Enterprise Solutions about six years. My mission is to bring AI products to market. And prior to that, I spent 20 years with IBM working on the Watson AI platform, natural language processing. Actually worked on the Jeopardy project, so One Jeopardy, uh, which was a great foundation in the very early days of AI. With Claro, I'm developing products that address uh, safety and security, as well as uh, uh, AI vision-based industrial products. What inspires you to do what you do? I'm passionate about AI. In fact, I actually am a learning facilitator for the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So I do industrial IoT and generative AI. And that's how I keep my skills up to date. I also can share my experience with younger generations. So it's stuff that I have a passion about. Okay. When did AI first come into your workflow? What was your initial response? Oh, it's been a while. It's probably been uh, about maybe 10 or 12 years. And it was originally the original Watson, IBM Watson natural language processing platform. It was teaching Watson how to understand the English language. So it was my first exposure to anything AI related. Of course, there was robotic process automation, but that's not AI. AI is much, much smarter. So. What are some misconceptions that you see people have about AI? Well, they think it's intelligent. Huh? <laughs> AI is uh, built to mimic human intelligence. And some of the AI technologies are more advanced than others. In particular, if you look at large language models, they predict what the next word should be based on the context of the question. Some models go back a word and then predict the next two words and then go back a word and predict. So they're a little smarter. But at the end of the day, it's a really statistical analysis, mathematics in action. So the misconception is AI is in some way sentient or in some way will become sentient. I guess the possibility is there, but it's more of, um, you know, people think it's really, really smart and it's manufactured or made to look uh, very smart. It can be, depends on what you're doing. Well, what does the ideal situation of that human component and AI working together look like to you? I'll give you an example using uh, an example of one of our products, which is called AI Video Analytics. We leverage existing video surveillance cameras in any company, in any in a business, any industry. And we add the artificial intelligence layer to the video streams of those cameras. And then we can configure the AI to look out for certain situations. So we can do things like weapons detection, intrusion detection, smoke and fire, people falling, facial recognition, license plate recognition, and many, many more uh, things with the AI use cases that we have developed. These are a little different than the standard AI use case in that they are configurable. So I can take any camera in any company located anywhere on premise and configure it to do, for example, weapons recognition. It might be a high resolution camera, maybe a low resolution camera, an existing camera. And we add the AI intelligence to generate alerts when those conditions are met. So we are deployed in schools, in colleges, in universities. We're deployed in museums. We're deployed in uh, you know, uh, living facilities, assisted living facilities as well as in property management companies. Uh, we have a plethora of customers in all kinds of different uh, um, industries. And we are unique in that we are certified by the Department of Homeland Security under the Safety Act. So we are working in local, state, and even federal agencies with police, with fire, with some three-letter agencies, uh, because we also have unique search technology. The AI can search video 4,500 times faster than a human. And we bring that as the value to our customers. Wow, what is your honest take on AI as part of the creative process? Is it a threat, a tool, something different? In my opinion, it's a very personal opinion, it is a tool. I don't believe the general consensus that AI is gonna take my job. I believe that 
if I don't learn to leverage AI tools, I may lose my job to someone that knows how to leverage those tools. So I see the impact with my students in that they're relying on AI to generate code, for example, not the entire solution, bits of code to do specific things. Uh, some people gener uh, use generative AI for creating new, uh, exciting marketing content, for example. It's very good at that. But remember, it's taking known stuff and creating something that is derived from that. So it's not pure new content, right? And who do you think is getting it right in terms of utilizing AI to drive that creative vision? That's a really tough question. There's a lot of really great stuff out there. I think the industry leaders are undoubtedly well recognized. I mean, the, the big uh, LLM producers are, are undoubtedly uh, at the top with uh, Llama from Meta, uh, you know, the Granite from IBM, uh, Mistral, Falcon, there's all kinds of different LLMs. But LLMs have a place in the world. AI is more than just LLMs. It's also the algorithms and the evolution of the algorithms and how they are being applied in the form of agentic AI and also in the form of industrial process-based AI. So there's different flavors of AI. There's lots of great new companies out there and lots of very creative solutions. It's a very exciting part of what's going on. When do you feel the most human in your work, even when you're working with these advanced tools? When I feel most human? Now that's a very interesting question. I think that uh, creation, the creation of the solution, uh, you leverage the AI to augment, enhance, improve, sometimes shorten the development, but the creative process is where I feel the most human. As I come up with the idea, the AI helps me realize the idea or bring the idea to market. And what's your superhero power, the thing that AI can just not replace? Um, hmm. I think the ability to connect things that are not necessarily related. Uh, because of my experience, I've done a lot of, th a lot of things with uh, industrial IoT and integration, and the AI is uh, not able to connect the dots. It's very good when you give it a task, when you give it a specific thing to do. But when you try to connect dots that are not necessarily related, it doesn't fare very well. That's where it hallucinates a lot. Well, Patrick, thank you for taking time to share with us at Cincy AI Week. Thank you very much for having me, I enjoyed it.